Hello everyone, back again on the Juxi Manga 2 channel, we will continue You Are My Stars chapter. Thank you, enjoy watching. After coming out of the community, the Yichen first went around to the nearby flower shop and carefully selected a bouquet of flowers. After paying, he drove the car again and headed towards the outskirts of Sioux City. After driving for about 45 minutes, he Yichen turned into the He family's private cemetery. Young master, everything has been arranged. The person guarding the cemetery knew he Jikin. After seeing him through the lowered driving window, he quickly opened the door and greeted him. Okay, thanks for your efforts. He Jichin nodded slightly and drove slowly into the cemetery, slowly parked the car in the parking lot, then opened the trunk, picked up flowers, and walked towards the depths of the cemetery. You haven't slept all night, have you? Yeah, I've been a bit busy lately. Young master, please remember to rest. All right, got it, you take care. Thank you for your concern, young master. I'll take my leave now, call if you need anything. Okay. After about 10 minutes of hiking, he Jichin stopped in front of a tombstone. As his fingertips slid, the three words, he Yu Guang, jumped into his eyes one after another. Bro, long time no see. At this moment, a gust of wind blew and the surrounding trees rustled. I came to see you. He Jikin stood quietly in front of the tombstone for a long time, then knelt down and placed the flowers directly in front of the tombstone. Then he slowly raised his head and looked at the black and white photo on the tombstone. Bro, how have you been recently? The person in the photo is wearing a white shirt, smiling and with a gentle expression. His facial features and outline were exactly the same as his own. Exactly the same. As if looking in a mirror, he Jichin stared at the black and white photo for a long time before raising his hand and slowly touching the words on the tombstone. Even though his eldest brother, He Yuguang, has been gone for three years, He Jichin still feels a deep and unspeakable sadness in his heart every time he comes to his tombstone. Five years ago, Boss Chen is here. Give me one Marlboros, gotcha. Fixed, I but it's broken again. Let's redo. It was a Wednesday. Ji Yi didn't go home after school at noon. After having lunch with a few girls, he went to the Happy Internet Cafe next to the school. Boss, Chen, class two. As Beauty asked you to the movies, you stood her up? Yeah, I stood her up. Coincidentally, that day, he and Fatty's group had an appointment to play a team game, and they were also at the Happy Internet Cafe. But she was on the first floor, and they were on the second floor. Don't get me involved in things like this again. I don't need any of that. He took a cigarette from the front desk and slowly swung it upstairs. Out of the corner of his eye, he inadvertently spotted her sitting against the window of the internet cafe. He subconsciously stopped and turned around to look. It's her. The bright sunshine of late summer shines through the window and hits her fair face, making the smile that blooms from time to time clean and beautiful. The magician fell silent while unboxing the cigarette pack and stared at her intently. Cola girl, huh? Sun Zhang? He Jichen knew that group of gangsters. Sun Zhang staring at Ji Yi and looking up and down while occasionally turning his head to the followers beside him, pointing at Ji Yi and muttering something. What's this punk looking at? He Jichen didn't know what Sun Zhang said, but his appearance made him feel disgusted for no reason. This brat wouldn't dare. When he passed behind Ji Yi, he deliberately pretended to have accidentally sprained his ankle and fell down on the back of Ji Yi's chair. He Jichen clearly saw Sun Zhang's hand resting on Ji Yi's shoulder. Why the hell did you push me? Sorry, boss son. Sorry, miss. You're not hurt, are you? Ah, I'm fine. Go get that sun guy to come upstairs. Say I want to see him. Got it. Which school are you from? Can I add your WeChat? Oh, um... Long time no see, boss son. Boss Chen summons you upstairs. Boss Chen agreed to see me? What an honor. You guys go have fun first. Got it, boss son. I begged you before, yet you wouldn't put in a good word for me. This is Boss Chen's personal invitation, can't say I don't look out for you. What's with this guy? No idea, ignore him. Let's continue. After taking two steps towards Heijichen, the fat man pushed Sun Zhang towards Heijichen, as if offering a treasure. Boss Chen, the person you wanted. Boss Chen, I heard you were looking for me. Less than half a minute later, 
Fatty and Sun Jiang appeared in his field of vision. Arriving on the second floor, Hei Jichen ignored the group of people playing and sat on the top step facing the stairs. Let's be friends, if you don't mind. Sun Jiang's heart was agitated when Hei Jichen looked at him. He didn't dare to look at Hei Jichen and said hello. His voice was careful and flattering. Hei Jichen still looked as silent as before, but he stretched out his hand towards Hei Jichen, as if he wanted to shake hands. Hei Jichen stared at Sun Jiang's hand, feeling extremely disgusted and angry. Hei Jichen only shook Sun Jiang's hand that had just touched Ji Yi's shoulder. What happened next? The cracking sound of Sun Jiang's hands and mouth turned into heart-wrenching words. The next second, Sun Jiang covered his wrist that was suddenly sprained by He Jichen's handshake, wailed, and ran away towards the stairs. Without thinking, He Jichen raised his foot and kicked Sun Jiang in the face. When Sun Jiang screamed in pain and fell to the ground, He Jichen stood up from the chair like a spring, pressed on Sun Jiang, and punched and kicked him. Fatty took a step towards the stairs just in time to be pushed by Sun Zhang's body from being kicked by He Jichen. He straightened out his messy clothes and glanced condescendingly at Sun Zhang, who was still lying on the ground groaning. He frowned and felt angry again in his heart. He resisted the urge to hit him again and kicked him with his toes. Keep it down, don't let my cola girl hear. Do you know why I hit you? I, I don't know. That girl you bumped into downstairs, she's under my protection. He Jishin let go of Sun Jiang's collar, looking like he was too lazy to look at him anymore, and waved his hand, signaling him to get out. I am warning you, stay away from her. If I see you make another move on her next time, I'll definitely cripple you. Scram. Sun Jiang didn't dare to stay for a moment, nor did he want to stay. He walked around the fat man and ran downstairs in a hurry. Boss, what happened to your face? Stop yapping and come with me. After Sun Jiang made such a fuss, He Jichen lost the mood to continue playing the team game. He leaned on the back of the chair in the internet cafe and smoked one cigarette after another. When the pack of cigarettes was almost empty, he turned his head and shouted at glancing downstairs. Ji Yi and her two friends were still there. Around them, various boys were sitting, some of whom were smoking. Oh, so smoky. She choked while playing games and covered her nose and frowned from time to time. Yeah, everyone's smoking. Boss Chen, why didn't you call us to beat him up instead of doing it yourself? Someone interrupted while holding a cigarette. Before he finished speaking, Hia Yishin glanced over and immediately changed his words. All of you go downstairs, switch out the other customers near the cola girl and her friend and tell them internet is on me today. That way no one will dare harass them. And also, He Jikin was about to wave for everyone to go downstairs. But when he saw a few people puffing away smoke, he frowned, pointed at them one by one, and spoke again. Put out all the cigarettes. This place is non-smoking today. Hey you, put that cigarette out. No smoking here. I'm always surrounded by a bunch of familiar faces. Your membership card. Now we can smoke now, right? Boss? He, she's about to leave. Later I realized they're all He Jichen's people. After the spring festival, everyone ushered in the second semester of high school. When school started again, Ji Yi, in addition to still studying seriously, began to study the key points of each course. Brother Yu Guang, high school material is so hard. After he returned home, he overheard Ji Yi complaining to He Yu Guang. I complained to Brother Yu Guang about my grades not improving. The next day, I received a huge stack of notes. Her inadvertent little complaint made him secretly decide to study not for anything else, just to help her. With Heiji Chen intervening, my life. When she was not in the study, he would sneak in and read her books. Textbooks and marked key points for her to reduce her learning burden. Seems to have changed a lot. I never have to wait in line for hot water. The cafeteria's best seats are always reserved for me. Don't touch anything of GE's. I'm never assigned cleanup shifts. GE, did you hear a girl from the other school was assaulted on XX Lane last night? That's on my way home from school. It's because there's no street lights. Be careful.
right after we discussed this. In early October of that summer, bad news came from the school next door. A female student was raped by several drunk men on her way home from school at night. He Yichin never paid attention to such messy news, but when the news reached his ears, he immediately ordered Fatty to send two people to follow Ji Yi from a distance every night to escort her home. Miraculously, that road lit up with street lamps. I don't know why Hei Jichen suddenly started treating me so well. Up until one day? What's taking Brother Yu Guang so long to get water? Bro, you wanted me? About that thing. Jichen, thanks for looking out for Man Man at school. Bro, I promise so. Of course I'll do it. So it's all because Brother Yu Guang asked him. But He Ji Chen seems decent, not as much of a bad boy as rumored. Brother Yu Guang. He Ji Chen, what are you doing here? Trying to read my diary again? No way, I'm just helping clean up. What did you want my brother for? It's Brother Yu Guang's birthday today. I have a solo dance at the school event. Wanted to perform as a gift for him. Going to rehearse now. I'll make sure he comes. Oh. Not even going to invite me. You know Yu Guang and I are identical twins. It's my birthday today too. I said don't plan anything this year. I'm not in the mood. Even if I die, keep loving. Boss, you have to celebrate your birthday. Come on. Follow me. We have prepared a surprise for you. A surprise? This way, boss. He Jichen arrived that day. Fatty surrounded him mysteriously and called Boss Chen, then helped him open the box door. Fine, let's see what you've got. It better be good or I'll punch you. As soon as he saw it, he saw Ji Yi, who was wearing a performance costume and looking gorgeous, sitting in the middle of the sofa in the box. Boss, happy birthday. He was stunned by her astonishing beauty first, and then looked at the person standing aside with some confusion. As soon as he saw it, he saw Ji Yi, who was wearing a performance costume and looking gorgeous, sitting in the middle of the sofa in the box. Her performance is in half an hour. Why is she here? Ji Yi, why are you? Could she actually be here for me? He was about to ask her why she was here, but what he said. Before he could say anything, Ji Yi stood up from the sofa when he saw him coming in, picked up the whole glass of beer that had just been poured from the table. Sis in law's turn for a toast. Sis in law's turn for a toast. Coincidentally, the day of the school anniversary coincided with He Ji Chen's birthday, and several brothers gathered together to discuss it secretly just like it was Sun Zhang who invited Ji Yi from school to the KTV, where they were preparing a birthday party for He Jichen. Just like he invited other girls to hang out at the school gate and planned to give He Jichen a surprise. He was about to ask her why she was here, but what he said. Before he could say anything, Ji Yi stood up from the sofa when he saw him coming in, picked up the whole glass of beer that had just been poured from the table, and poured it on his face. He Jichen! I overestimated you! I thought you were decent. He Jichen was confused by the drink poured on his face by Ji Yi. I never would have thought. Do you think it's so cool to forcefully take someone from school like this? The group of people around him became unhappy when they heard Ji Yi's eloquent scolding. Some even spoke fiercely. Shut up, all of you. Before the second person spoke, He Jichen, who was silent, suddenly said, he Jichen's voice was so cold that the whole room fell silent. A sound. He Jichen glanced at the people in the room with a gloomy look and then asked, 
Who brought her here? Boss, we saw her and... This time, a few people stood up obediently with their heads hanging down. Apologize. Boss, we meant well. Hijikin didn't listen to their explanation at all and said bluntly. Several people were unwilling to do so and stood still. Hijichin roared again. Go apologize! Several people then faced Ji Yi and apologized one by one. Sorry, I'm very sorry. Hijichin's face was still a little ugly. He waited until the last person finished saying sorry, then took a step to the side and opened the door of the KTV box. My brother is waiting for you over there. Hijichin's face was still a little ugly. He waited until the last person finished saying sorry, then took a step to the side and opened the door of the KTV box. Got it. After all, Ji Yi didn't need Hijichin's people to see her off. She left the KTV and walked away without even looking at Hijichin's group. Boss, it's my fault for ruining your party. I thought you'd be happy to see Cola Girl. Don't act on your own again. All right, go have fun. Boss, please speak. Pick a song. That night, Hijichin's carefully prepared birthday party was ruined. That night, Hijichin got very angry at a group of people in the KTV box and warned them that he would not be lenient with anyone who harassed Ji Yi. I distanced her without realizing. Where you going, boss? You're up next. You guys sing, I need some air. So annoying. Ji Yi, how can I get close to you? Ji Yi, who do you think you're fooling? Ji Yi? Let go of me. Don't go dancing here or anywhere, still dancing. Rare to see you in costume, give bro a performance first. Let me go, ouch. What's your problem? Hijichin? Holy crap! Looks like you never learn. I never give second warnings. Apologize. Boss. Daring to hit our boss. You're asking for it. You're dead!
I didn't scare you, did I? And no. Let me take you home. Hey, chicken, behind you. Apologize. Ignoring all the watching men and women around him, he lifted his foot and kicked Sun Zhang to his knees in front of Ji Yi. I apologize for not recognizing you. Ji Yi, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Spare me. The beautiful light that day shone on Hee Jichen's head and hit his face, making it feel like a beautiful scene in a movie. Her faint smile seemed like a stunning flower blooming in Hee Jichen's heart. At that moment, the sadness he had felt because of her since his birthday disappeared completely. He looked back at her and smiled too. What are you doing? Let's get your wounds looked at. Treat wounds? But my brother's waiting for you at the event hall? Because they were running fast and in a hurry, several people bumped into each other. The scene was funny and funny. Forget it, go hospital first. He smiled at the memory of the past which was deeply connected to the memory of him being bullied by Ji Yi at the bar last night. You know, bro, that was the first time she cared so much. He lowered his eyes, swallowed hard, then withdrew his finger from the tombstone, turned over, sat down on the ground, leaned his head on the tombstone. Also, the first time I felt I beat you. After that, we started getting close. Going to school together very day. She also got used to me taking care of her, but we still drifted apart. It was Chinese Valentine's Day. At five o'clock in the afternoon, Ji Yi ran to He Jichen who was sleeping on the table and said, he, Ji Chen. The whole school, Ji Yi was probably the only person who dared to disturb He Jichen's sleep. He, Ji Chen was very upset when he woke up, but after being woken up by Ji Yi, he didn't show any annoyance. Are you free after school? He opened his hazy eyes and asked, yeah, what's up? Um, after school, come by the grove behind school. That's it. When Ji Yi saw that he had agreed, she turned and left, her hair following her movements, swinging in a beautiful, proud arc. Jichen's heart skipped two beats with this simple sentence. It took a lot of effort for him to calm down. Our first date? I don't know how grateful he Jichen was because of Sun Zhang's problem, because this is how he found a logical reason for himself and treated him openly. Ji Yi also rose to Jichen even more. Is this too mature? Hejishin didn't attend his morning and evening self-study, so he took Fatty with him, skipped class, and went to the mall. He bought a new set of clothes and changed into them. He also went to the hairdresser to have a look and went to the woods early to wait.
long wait? It wasn't until 10 o'clock that someone finally came, but it wasn't Ji Yi, but her friend Qian Ge. Hey Ji Chen, let's go see a movie. Qian Ge. Why are you here? Where's Ji Yi? She, she went home, so she came to help Qian Ge in the afternoon and asked him to go to the woods? Didn't Ji Yi say I asked you here? Then you should go home too. He Jichen. Do you know how uncomfortable it feels when the girl you love sets you up with another woman? He Jichen could tolerate whatever she did, but he couldn't stand this one thing. His face was frighteningly cold on the spot. He didn't even spare a glance at Qian Ge, who was dressed in a colorful way and walked away directly. I'm going. Brother Yuguang, I just brewed this floral tea with honey, try it. At home, he met Ji Yi, who was having fun with He Yuguang. She was making tea for He Yuguang. Oh, you're back so soon? Ji Yi saw him coming back so quickly and asked. It was a good thing she didn't ask, but the question ignited all his anger. He, Jichen, looked straight at Ji Yi with a cold face and continued walking forward, and his eyes fell on her from time to time. Was it fun? Don't play childish games again. 